All right, we just keep plugging away at the concept. I'd like to show you um, another not too difficult region in integration, but just another way of praising and asking the question. And that is, if we have a region that's bounded by y equals zero, y equals x, and x equals eight, once we've looked at the region visually, could we set up the polar double integral for area? So the concept of area, as you might recall, the double integral could be used to measure area if the inside function of z equals is just equal to one. It also could be considered volume if the region is one unit thick. But area, y equals zero, that's right, it's the x-axis. y equals x, it's the following line. x equals eight, that's right, it's a vertical line. We are investigating this triangle. That's our region, bounded by the three graphs provided. Now, if this was geometry, this problem would be so much easier. What we're doing now is sort of like having a nuclear fly swatter. It doesn't require that big of a tool for the job, but it does allow me to verify that this fancy mathematics agrees with math that we've known for a long time. Geometric area of a triangle, one half the base, which is eight units. And the height is also eight units. And in case you just don't see it, because I'm going too fast, um, it's the y value equals the x value, so that also has to be 8 units. Um, that will be 32 units squared. I didn't provide units, so I'll just leave it as a 32 for the second here. Now, the polar version of this problem will be set up Remember, dA becomes r times dr d theta, and those would be theta boundaries, and these would become r boundaries. Maybe we can just do some of this by observation. I mean, r goes from zero to whatever that angle is, and in this line of slope one, that is a 45 degree angle. So theta goes from zero 2 pi divided by 4. So theta goes from 0 to pi divided by 4. The radius goes from the origin, so 0 units away, to that vertical line. Please note that as we am watering my triangular yard here, as my angle theta increases, so does my radius. It's eight units at the bottom, but I'm telling you it's more than eight units here. If it changes, that means there's a variable. And what we do for this is to take our equation of our vertical line, x is eight, r multiplied by cosine theta is the same as x. That equals 8. So r equals either 8 divided by cosine theta or 8 secant theta. All right. 0 to 8 secant of theta. First antiderivative with respect to r. We'll wait on this. Integral of r is r squared divided by two. 
r goes from 0 to 8 secant of theta. If r is 8 secant theta, then that becomes 64 secant squared theta divided by 2. And if r becomes 0, then this fraction becomes 0, leaving us just the one term in here. with respect to theta. Half of 64 is 32. The antiderivative or the integral of secant squared is tangent of theta. And theta is gonna go from zero to pi divided by four. Thirty-two tangent of pi over four minus tangent of zero. Just so you can see me using the substitution, the tangent of pi over four. Well, that's right; it's one, and the tangent of zero is zero. Thirty-two multiplied by one is thirty-two which was the same area we had when we used geometry to calculate the area. Now for my students, I just wanna drop a couple of, uh, or one practice problem on you. In our books, 14.1, problem 59, which is a section that has nothing to do with polar coordinates. Um, this problem is fantastic to convert to polar. Um, do not integrate. I just want to see if you can do the conversion. Just more practice, more practice, more practice. Catch you later.